I went to preach somewhere in Western Nigeria, and when I got there, the minister that ministered before me, who happens to be, I think this last surviving disciple of Apostle Babalola, that, that learned their ways of prayer, last, the last of them. So he ministered before me, and uh, they told him that I'm, I'm the next minister. So we got into town, went straight to our lodging, to rest and all of that. He sent the pastor to call me. And he wants to, he wants to see that man. Meanwhile, the person I'm talking about doesn't have physical eyes. But he said, he wants to see that man. So we rushed there. And you will know that this man has another eye. Hey, the man has another eye. He doesn't need physical eyes. That's a man that has done business with the supernatural realm for long. The sight he received in the spirit was a very powerful replacement for his physical eye. Oh, you are not with me. Oh, you believe that is not in the Bible? Huh? Come with me. Let me show you a scripture. Give me Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3. Because I want to know how many of us are are really ready to do business with the invisible. Because when you want to do business with the invisible, you don't look at the cloud or the wind. No, we don't look at physical. No, no, no. The way results come from spiritual transaction is not according to the progressions that is suggestive of such a manifestation in the natural. It was Elisha that told them, he said, dig ditches. You may not see cloud and you may not see rain, but the ditches shall be filled with water. It, it only men that do business with the intangible can make such statements. This is Isaiah chapter 11, and I know you know Isaiah chapter 11. The subject of Isaiah chapter 11 is the grace that is on the Messiah. If you read Isaiah chapter 11 very, very carefully, you will find out that Isaiah 11 is pointing to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Just take time and read it. You will come to the same conclusion. Now, this is the anointing that will operate on the Messiah. I left verse 1 and verse 2 because my interest is verse 3. Ah, Go to verse 1. If we can't talk about verse 3 without verse 1. It said, There shall come forth a root out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall go grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord. Have you seen it? Go to verse 3 now. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This Spirit of the Lord that shall rest upon him shall make him quick, of quick understanding in the fear of God such that he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ear. If you have an electronic Bible, click on quick understanding. It's, it's one word in the Hebrew. It's called ruach. Have you confirmed it? Ruach. What's the meaning of ruach? Breath. Have you seen it? Any confirmation there? Oh, no confirmation. It means we don't have an electronic, nobody has an electronic Bible to confirm it. I, I want you to, I, I don't want you to think that I'm making up things. Anybody with a Bible, an electronic Bible that's equipped with a lexicon? Yeah, so have you confirmed that it's rock? It's rock. He shall make thee of rock understanding. So there's an understanding that comes through rock, through the breath of God. And that understanding is superior to the sight of your eyes. It can be a replacement for sight. It can be a replacement for hearing. Because the man I saw, he was without physical eyes, but the man could see me. 
I saw the, you know me, I see in scripture. So I saw this scripture fulfilled before my face. Meanwhile, that's a man that fake pastors in his city are afraid to see him because when you, when you come to him, he will say you are fake and he will, he will tell you, if you visit again, I'll curse you. Yes. So fake pastors don't come close to him. He was the one that sent for me. I didn't, I didn't, we were sleeping. He told me the prayer point that was on my heart. He, he picked the prayer point and told me he, that God has answered this thing that you've been. Ruach. That when the breath of God hits your regenerated spirit, are you there? You are not here. Okay, this is Jesus in the book of John chapter 3. Said so there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that's verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This was Jesus' explanation for what it meant to be born again. This was the opportunity Jesus had to define what it meant to be born again. Instead of definition, he gave an illustration. Jesus will always dodge definitions. He did definition only one time. It's Apostle Paul that, that deals in definitions. But Jesus will escape it. He says, Except a man be born again. This is Jesus' description of what it means to be born again. And his description of what it means to be born again is experiential and not definitive. Except a man be born again, are you there? He cannot see the kingdom of God. It means that the proof that the Holy Ghost is indwelling your heart is that he gives you perception of what is obtainable in the realm of God. For your information, the Greek word for see is idol. And idol means to perceive by reason of the use of senses. Do you remember when you were in the womb at nine months, you had eyes, but the eyes were not meant for the womb. So that you couldn't see in the womb. Is that true? You had ears when you were nine months, fully developed. But the ears were not active in the womb because they were not designed for the womb. You had to be born first before your eyes became relevant. You had to be born first before your ears became relevant. And Jesus is saying, when you are now born again, there are spiritual senses built into your spirit. But you need to be born again in order for those senses to become relevant. That's what... The word, the, the Greek word idol means you need to be born into the realm of the Lord. Born into the realm of God. And when the Spirit of God breathes upon your spirit man, what it produces is that perception now begins to come of the realm of God. That's why the word there was ruach. So when, when the Holy Ghost comes to indwell your regenerated human spirit, it comes with perception. You, you understand that? That perception is what I'm saying can be a very powerful replacement for the sight of your eyes and for the hearing of your ears. For he shall make him of ruach understanding in the fear of God and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes nor the hearing of his ears. If you are going to do business with the realm of God, you, your navigating system will be ruach, will be that perception that comes from the Holy Ghost because your physical senses are no longer valuable for such transaction. Oi, you are not following me. You will use your spiritual perceptions as the organ 
of sensing when you are traveling in the realm of the spirit. He that cometh to God, he must believe. He must believe. The stepping stone into those possibilities is called faith. Are you there? Now, I, I, as we come into the practical aspect of this matter, I would have loved to give us... Okay, today is Friday. Ah, thank God. I'll do it tomorrow. I will show you what Roak does. There are eight forms of perception that you can receive through your spiritual senses. So we'll do a brief refresher course on those matters. Because when you begin to trouble the spirit realm, trouble the realm, there will be feedback from the realm. And the feedback will come in, term, in, in form of perceptions. Perceptions that you secure on your spirit man. If I don't teach you about perceptions, about the use of your receptacle, then this lecture is in vain. When you begin to knock on the door of heaven, heaven is going to respond. But they will not respond in your natural language. Jesus was the one that says, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So there are words that are valid words, but yet those words are spirit. They are spirit words. And there are eight kinds of spirit words that you must be acquainted to with because that is how the feedback of all your interactions will take place. So if you want to evaluate your, your pilgrimage in the spirit, you don't ev evaluate it with a proof in the natural. We evaluate it with feedback. Feedback that comes through Ruach. Are you there? If you know what I'm talking about, you can see danger before it comes. You will know that, ah, I need to take a journey of fasting because of your perception. You are not a strong man around the altar if you don't know how God responds when you make an effort to secure his attention. So what we are talking about here is that we have left the realm of the natural and the instrument with which we are using to navigate is called faith because we are dealing with the realm of the intangible. We are dealing with the realm of the invincible. And there's a way that invincible realm registers his wisdom upon the spirits of men. 